So I just kept saying, if I could just beat the next motherfucker in the room, mm -hmm. I will always have a way to make my way through this business. And then finally, look, man, uh, Ray Charles came along. Uh, uh, th that movie came along, and it was like I had been preparing myself, not knowing that this movie was going to come along. But, my, mm -hmm. but, but when I got with the director, the director was like, you know, when we first started working on Ray, first of all, I had to be 157 yeah, pounds. It was a bunch that was of weight. first thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I was so right now, you know, I'm walking around now because I'm getting ready to jump up to this Tyson thing. I'm walking around now like 205, but I had to drop to 157. Mm. And then he was like, okay, I, I got a problem. I said, I got to be able to hold the camera on you, but I need somebody to play the piano for you. I said, no, man. Uh, my grandmother, you know, taught me how to play the piano mm. when I was five years old. So, so I'm, I'm equipped. I'm ready to go get it. Now, mind you, nobody was really thinking about the movie Ray Charles. We weren't thinking about that. It was an independent film. And then finally, I meet Ray Charles. And I, 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 had to, I had to, like, really win him over. And I said, Mr. Charles, I just want to do the best that I can uh, to, you know, to, to, to tell your story. And he's like, hey, hey, hey you know what? Hey, hey, can you pay the blues? I said, uh, <laughs> I, I said, what? Hey, hey, if you can play the blues band, hey, you can do anything. <laughs> so we, sat down, oh, man, so we sat down on the piano, right? And we, we started playing the piano. So we were playing the blues and everything like that. And then I hit a, he moved into Thelonious Monk, which is right, real intricate jazz shit. And then I hit a wrong note. He got, hey, you know, why the fuck would you do that? I was like, oh, <laughs> I was just trying to keep up. He said, hey, you know what, hit the right notes, man. You know, that's, and he said, that's what life is, taking your time to hit the right notes. Mm. Yeah. So I finally played the piece right. He got up, slapped his leg, hey, the kids got it, and he walked out. So that preparation, <clears throat> When we got into the movie, was all I had. One of the problems was that I met Ray Charles while he was older. I needed the young Ray Charles. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to Quincy Jones. I go over to Quincy's house and say, hey, man, shit, come on in here, man. Shit, what are you trying to do, man? Shit. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to do all the Ray Charles. I said, shit, man, Ray was a son of a bitch, man. You know, I have all the keys to what he was doing, man. He was a son of a bitch, but he was incredible. So I said, but I need to know the young Ray Charles. So he gave me a cassette tape. Mm. That conversation that cassette alone, tape, I could imagine that conversation alone. Oh, man. Bro. Just sitting there talking to Quincy, talking about, you know, what he did with Michael Jackson and Usher and all that shit was just amazing. And he gave me that cassette tape. He said, maybe there's something on this tape. And on that tape, people will probably have to Google this, but it was a lady named Dinah Shore on there. And she says, hi, this is Dinah Shore from the Dinah Shore Show with two very wonderful musicians, and Mr. Kenny Rogers and Mr. Ray Charles. Seen it and in the that. back, you hear, uh, hey, you know what, I, 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 I'm so happy to be here, you know, Dinah, I didn't know you knew my music. Hey, you know what, is it? And then, and then she asked him about the drugs. She said, well, talk about the drugs, Ray. And he's like, and he stopped. And so he started to like, you know, stumble and, and fumble his words. So I took that as the DNA. Mm -hmm. That every time he was met with something that was challenging, he was he was stuttering the movie. Mm -hmm. And so then we went on, we did the movie, man. And after the movie came out, you just seen everybody flock to it. It was like, you know, when I'm doing these characters, man, sometimes the characters have to like embody you. So I embody Ray and then it just caught fire. And the next thing you know, um, we was on our way. That type of shit better come out. If not... I'm talking like I'm gonna whoop this nigga's ass. Well, he is from Texas. So I might be able to whoop his ass. But I'm not saying I could beat niggas ass from Texas. I'm saying I'm in Texas. He might kind of tech. Gives a fuck. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from group82music.com. Right here, we got Jamie Foxx talking about how he prepares for roles like Ray and the movie Tyson. One thing I want y'all to really take away from this clip is read and research. Entrepreneurs and creatives, we have to be able to read and research. That is the most important skill that you have. Everything that you see as a part of Group 82 is from reading and research. Anybody who we hire at Group 82, you have to be able to read and you have to be able to research at a high level or you won't be able to work for us because that is the DNA of who I am that I've been trained to be by my parents. And that is how I run my business. It's how I've been able to do everything I've done in the music business. It's how I make my money. When you are really passionate about something, you gotta be able to read and research. And it shows that Jamie Foxx does the exact same thing. He was taking it above and beyond when he was preparing for Ray. Like reaching out to Quincy Jones, getting those conversations, listening to the tapes and seeing like, 
little tiny things like anytime they asked Ray Charles about drugs or adversity, he would stutter, he would hesitate, he wasn't as confident. I'm worried about you. But as a friend, I'm telling you, man, your slip is hanging. <laughs> your slip is hanging. You, you've been hanging out with us country boys too much, man. Hey, look, don't worry about this, man. If this monkey gets too heavy on my back, man, I will get an organ grinder, man, and put it to work. And when you watch the movie, that is the anchor of the Ray character. When you're making music, you gotta find anchors in yourself. You gotta find anchors in your rap style. You gotta find anchors in your storytelling, your songwriting. You have to find something that connects you with the music. Every single track on True Support has an anchor. Every single one, from Don't Sleep all the way down to Don't Sleep Remix, everything on there has an anchor. I was like, you know what? This is why I'm riding with this song and I'm gonna push it all the way through. And when it got done, I was like, you know what? I'm messing with it. I'm gonna put it on the album. Everything on there. You have to find that. That is what a creative is. That is what a songwriter is. That's what a thespian is. Those y'all don't know what a thespian is. It's not a lesbian. Go look it up. That is what you have to do if you want to be a person who creates for a living. You have to find little tiny things and you find that through reading and research and it has to connect with you, something personally, like Jamie Foxx did with the piano array. And that makes you like, you know what? I can do this. This is what I'm putting my twist on it. This is why this is going to be mine. That's why when I get beats off of YouTube, I don't care who else is wrapped on it. It doesn't matter. You're not hearing the pockets I'm hearing. You're not gonna pick the subject matter I'm gonna pick. And even if you do, you not gonna rap about it the way I'm a fucking rap about it. Go listen to my instrumental on Michael Porter. It's on the internet, you can go find it. And when you listen to Michael Porter, the instrumental, you're not going to choose the pockets that I chose. You wouldn't make a song about the number one basketball player in the country at that time, who's gonna go to the University of Missouri. Like you're not going to put those experiences in the first verse like I did, that was personal, and public and in the second verse you're not gonna come into ncaa the way i did because i used to be a division one college basketball coach so i don't give a fuck what you do with that beat i don't care what your subject matter is it's not gonna be better than what i did on michael porter and when i directed the music video it was animated i wanted to relate that i wanted to illustrate everything that i was describing in the song like i almost wrote the song like a movie a little bit like i didn't go too deep in detail so I wanted to keep it kind of theoretical, more so philosophical, almost like coming at the powers that be. But in the video, I wanted to make sure I gave y'all the illustration of that and put y'all in the head of Michael Porter because it's something that resonated with me because I've been a college basketball coach and I've been around those players. That's what you gotta do. That's what I do in all my creations. Do you do that? If not, the fuck are you waiting on? Even when it comes to marketing, business creativity, it has to be something that resonates with me. This true support campaign just resonates with me. Why? Because I want to chart on iTunes, number one. I want to chart on the Billboard 200. And I want to be able to give value to my audience. Not everybody can do what I'm doing. Not everybody has six Spotify playlists they own. Not everybody has built a brand around these Spotify playlists where they're valuable. And not everybody has an audience that's checking for them and that wants a Spotify playlist. I knew that was something that y'all would value. I knew how much it costs. I said, so let me give it to them for 95% off because that aligned with my brand, that aligns with the business. And it's a win-win for me because I get an album sale and y'all get placed on a playlist permanently. This is the shit you got to do. Creativity is in everything that we do. From this microphone to how it's shaped in the color, to the microphone stand, to this camera, to this merch, everything is a part of being creative. Someone was creative when they made that shit. You gotta be thinking the exact same way in everything that you do. You want that playlist placement? You want me to get that album sale? So we can chart on iTunes and go on the Billboard 200? Go click that link in the bio right now. I'm out the pond, y'all stay true. Group eighty two music dot com dot com dot com dot com